Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to another Sensei series, and I want to welcome you to the new dojo. Today we're looking at six ways to sound like your favorite guitarist. Since the dawn of time, musicians have drawn inspiration from their musical forefathers. It's a crucial part of development, but remember the end goal should never be to become a clone of one single guitarist. Seek inspiration from a wealth of different sources and eventually find your own sound. There are links to the individual tips down there in the description. Let's dive in. Number one, actively and passively listen. Music is like a language, and no matter how much you study it, you're missing out on a key component if you're not hearing it spoken. A lot of learning is done through osmosis. We hear it enough and it sinks into our musical subconscious, so that when we go to play, it comes out in our accent. There are two types of listening, both important. Passive listening is having the music on without it being your primary focus. When you're working out, when you're cooking, when you're playing Pokemon, you get the point. This is how most people listen to music, but it's also important to be actively listening. This is when the music is the primary focus focus and you're trying to analyze what you're hearing. During an active listening session, you should always be asking yourself questions. Why does John Frusciante play that particular lick there? What role does it have in the song? And in what way does it further the music? Or you might find yourself thinking, what chord is she playing there? Have I ever heard a chord like that before? If not, maybe I'll make a note to learn it later. The idea here is you're trying to get inside the guitarist's head, as well as jotting down interesting things that you want to figure out later. Which brings me to number two, transcribe. Transcribing is the act of figuring out a pre-existing piece of music. Time to set aside the guitar tabs and learn things the old-fashioned way using your ear. This is important for numerous reasons. It helps develop our ear, a critical tool that is often neglected in the age of guitar tabs. For more info on ear training, I've got a video dedicated to that very subject. You should also be seeing a link for it somewhere up here. Since you're taking the time to analyze and break down every single note, transcribing gets you deep into the music. It's a fairly time-consuming endeavor, and because of this, by the time you've worked something out, it's made its way into your musical subconscious, that thing I'm always talking about. And if you aren't up for the daunting task of transcribing an entire solo, start simple. There's a lot you can learn from one single lick. If this concept is new to you, I recommend starting with something feasible. Don't dive into the hardest thing you can find or you're just gonna find yourself frustrated and discouraged. Number three, incorporate their licks. After you've transcribed something, the work isn't over. You wanna make sure you can incorporate what you've learned into a musical setting. The first aspect of this is to be able to play along with a recording note for note. Try to get as close as possible. You're gonna pick up on a lot of minute details that make up a guitarist's voice. When I did a cover of Another Brick in the Wall, I tried to play that solo as close as I could. Trying to emulate David Gilmour's bends and vibrato gave me a whole new appreciation for his playing. I'd also recommend learning some of your favorite licks on different places on the guitar neck. I've heard Stevie Ray Vaughan play this a million times. <laughs> If I can play it in numerous different positions, it's going to come out much more naturally. And side note, don't forget to learn it in different keys, which as a guitarist isn't too hard. The fingering stay the same, you just need to move your hand position. It's also great to take a lick you love and try twisting it around, making something different but heavily inspired by it. Using that same lick from before, I might do something like this. You could then take that lick and see if you can make a whole solo inspired by it. Using the same example, let's try it. The more we do this, the more we develop our vocabulary and ultimately find our own voice. Number four, play along with their recordings. This is fairly straightforward. Jam along with a song you like without necessarily playing exactly what's on the record. In a way, you're replicating jamming with your favorite artist without actually doing it. When we're playing guitar, our brain is much more engaged in the music. Not only will we pick up on little things the band is doing, but we're also forced to stay in line with the chord and song structure. Number five, study their influences. One of the best ways to understand your favorite musician is to understand who inspired them. If I want to play like Tommy Emanuel, and honestly, who doesn't, I'm going to look at who he learned from. Chet Atkins, Mark Knopfler, Merle Travis, Eric Clapton, among others. Then why not dive into the musicians that influenced them? Albert King, B.B. King, Howlin' Wolf, Muddy Waters, 
the list goes on. By researching your musical family tree, you'll have a deeper understanding of whatever genre you love. It can also act as a stepping stone, as music evolves through the generations and often gets more complicated. Diving into Tommy Emanuel's style right away can be a little daunting, but by learning some of the basics through his influence, we can work up to his style. Number six, our final tip, use similar gear. I've left this one to last because I feel it's the least important of the bunch. Gear is the cherry on top of the cake. Working on all the other things will get you much closer to your musical goals than spending a fortune on equipment. You can't buy skill and you can't cut corners when it comes to hard work. However, while purchasing the exact same gear your favorite guitarist used may be out of the question, buying similar things can help emulate their sound. My one big recommendation is seek out quality over quantity. In my experience, buying something, then selling it, then upgrading, then selling it, then upgrading is significantly more expensive than just buying the upgrade in the first place. So there you have it, six ways to sound like your favorite guitar player. I want you to think of why you love certain guitarists. For me, a lot of it has to do with their individuality. My favorites all brought something new and different to the table. Music is about self-expression, and nobody can do Jimi Hendrix better than the man himself. In the same way, no one can do you as well as you. I don't recommend fixating on one particular player or style for too long. Emulate and steal from everyone in every genre, and you'll find yourself doing something fresh and true to you. These videos are made possible by the people who support me on Patreon. Please consider heading over there, there's a bunch of rewards, and it helps ensure a future for my channel. If you're interested in doing a private Sensei session over Skype, all you need to do is send me a message using the email in the description. Thank you all for watching, I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I will see you next time.